There is no such thing as waste in nature. And with a Black Soldier 5 facility, we take in food waste, convert that into large insects that we turn into protein meal that we can then feed animals and humans sustainably. By 2050, the global population is expected to reach almost 10 billion. Demand for food could rise by 60%, further impacting already depleted land and oceans. Just like us, the animals we eat need protein. Around 40% of global crop calories go towards animal feed, with the two main sources coming from fish meal and soy. How can we sustainably meet the world's needs on finite resources while protecting the environment? Flies, bugs and creepy crawlies, we kill them without a second thought. But what if insects are the answer to greater sustainability, deforestation and food shortages? Maybe you should put that fly swat down and come with me. Oh, and I should warn you, you're about to see wriggling, writhing larvae. It's pretty gross. Encycle's mission is a simple one, to sustainably feed the world using the power of insects. Black soldier flies are one of nature's key recyclers. There is no such thing as waste in nature, and with a black soldier fly facility, we take in food waste, convert that into large insects that we turn into protein meal that we can then feed animals and humans sustainably. Hello! Hello, hello, how are you doing? Hi, I've bought my PPE, I'm COVID safe. Is it Karen? Yes, it is. Good to meet you, Karen. Fantastic. Tucked away under the railway arches in London is the R&D office of EntoCycle. Director Karen Whitaker founded the company six years ago. With a background in environmental engineering, he travelled the world as a scuba diver and saw the pressure food production for the human race can have on the environment. There are two main problems with the current food supply chain. One is that countries like the UK are massively dependent upon imports, so about 80 or 90 percent, and that's of two key protein products, soya meal and fish meal, which we import internationally from the likes of Brazil uh, and South America, such as Chile and Argentina. That means we're placing huge issues on other countries to produce the food for us. COVID has perfectly demonstrated the problem with the supply chain, with food being caught at ports, uh, you know, the timeline between products being delivered has just massively increased. So what we need is hyper-local, sustainable protein production and black soldier flies are one of the key solutions in, to this problem. Matt Hall is the company entomologist or insect expert. Oh, cool little office space. Yeah. And this is the insectary. Uh -huh. This is where we keep all of our insects. Uh, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> I bet. This is your office, Matt. Whoa. What? Is that... Is that the insects? That is nasty. Yeah, so they're eating the food that we're feeding them. So beer grains and coffee are kind of what you're smelling right now. And that's what they're eating That does today. not smell like beer grains and coffee. It's quite acidic and it smells a little bit like, it smells a little bit like poo. Despite the smell, Matt was drawn to EntoCycle's vision, which aligns with how he wants to lead his life. In previous entomology type jobs that I've had, they involved spraying lots of harmful chemicals to try to kill lots of insects in remote parts of the world. And I wanted to sort of keep my work a bit more local and try to solve the, the food waste problem that we're seeing in, in the country that I live in. So the black soldier fly larvae, they're the ones that have to do all the yucky work. They have to eat all the waste. Now, warning, we're about to show them to you and they're very wriggly and a little bit gross. I told you so, but you need to get used to them because they could play a big part in our food future. But anyway, back to the flies. Around 2,000 black soldier flies get on with the business of breeding, which is their sole reason for living. Soon after, they die. We let the flies uh, mate and lay eggs for yep. about six days. You can see the wooden egg traps we mm -hmm. have on top of that rotting stuff. Um, that just makes it easy for us to collect the eggs when they do lay them. And did you think about using other insects? I mean, you know, I mean, mealworms are used quite a lot to feed animals, aren't they? Mealworms need uh, dry, high-quality food stock, whereas we can feed these black soldier flies. Um, I mean, they can process any waste from what we feed, which is human food waste. Um, they can eat, uh, eat meat. They can also eat manure and develop um, that way. So we can feed them almost anything and get a high-quality protein source out at the other end. There's no need to tend pastures or grow crops. Food waste is picked up from the local cafes and breweries.
Steph Rogers then puts it through a mixer and the final product will be mixed in with the larvae. But like any dad, Matt must wait for the eggs to hatch in the nursery, or cupboard in this case. So 24 to 48 hours after we've taken the eggs, um, they'll hatch out into the food here. So we place them on these hatching platforms. If you look closely at this one here, maybe at the end of the mesh, you can see really, really tiny, what we call neonatal larvae, the larvae that have just emerged from the eggs. The black soldier fly, or Hermetia elucens, has a rapid life cycle. Once the eggs have hatched, the larvae live for three to four weeks before they begin to pupate, and two weeks later they emerge as flies. But for protein production, the larvae are harvested and processed after two weeks. Oh, this is it. This is, this is where they just grow. Yeah. In these so, racks. That's right. It's a very sustainable, fast food development with a tiny carbon footprint that can be set up anywhere, which is why the food industry is sniffing about. Right at the beginning, it was quite difficult because the idea of breeding billions of flies, you know, on the first, on the face of it, looks quite, you know, crazy. But actually, it's now become mainstream. You know, media are talking about it. Supermarkets are engaged with this. Feed companies need it. I think COVID and the kind of greater concept of food security has definitely uh, brought this to attention. Um, so we've seen a massive increase in kind of outreach to people who want a more sustainable future for their supply chains. And you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, but the key part here is that we need the technology that enables these facilities to be built. So EnterCycle has focused on that key enabling technology so that we can build hundreds, if not thousands of facilities all around the world. Next year, EnterCycle will build what they hope is the first of many industrial insect protein factories in the UK. Each will contain five to 10 million flies on any oh, given day. Look at that. So from hatching, to um, harvest, the larvae will actually grow about 10,000 times their mass. Those going on to become flies go into the pupa stage, which is like a cocoon. In the opposite way that the larvae are photophobic, they try to burrow away from the light, the flies are actually phototactic, they're attracted to the light. Um, the flies actually don't have uh, the ability to eat or, or gain any energy. All of the energy that the flies have was stored from the larval stage. So we don't want the flies to waste their energy by buzzing around these lights. So we keep them in a dark chamber here yeah. and let them emerge as flies wow, in these containers. Wow, that sound. I mean, that would be really annoying if I was at home, but here it's quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. Intercycle is planning trials with salmon and is hoping the EU will soon approve trials for chickens. But to satisfy demand in future, they'll need to be delivering 50 to 100 tonnes of insect protein a day. That means perfecting the processes here in the insectary. Each day, Steph harvests eggs from the traps. This is all about standardisation, so making the process the same every single time, every single day, the same process. And so how many eggs does each black soldier fly lay? So a female can lay between 600 and 1,200, um, kind of, a, you know, around 600, 800 is normal. Um, but what we care is about the efficiency of getting the majority of the females to mate and lay eggs. So with the same amount of eggs hatching, to have the larvae to eat the same amount of food, to produce the same amount of larvae that will produce the same amount of flies, that will then again produce the same amount of eggs. And so it's all about making that process um, as continuous and as streamlined as possible so that downstream it becomes really easy to produce protein and more flies. So you're talking about scalability then? Exactly, exactly. So standardisation is fundamental. It's easy to farm insects badly. It's difficult to farm them well and at scale. And so that's what we do here at EnterCycle. Right. And so this is easily scalable? Yeah, this is fantastically easily scalable. While humans are terrible polluters, nature cleans up its mess. What's being separated here are pupae and the digested waste, also known as frass or poo. Oh, that's one hell of a massage. So, are the pupae all right after yeah, that? Yeah, they're absolutely fine after this process. As you can see here, they're all they're still fine and moving. Tell me a bit more about the, the poo. So the insect frass, is, as what is known, is essentially the, the, the leftover digestate. Um, we've been running trials with universities that have shown that with about a five to 10% inclusion of our frass, we can have almost 100% larger plants. So I can take something of this for my tomatoes? Yes, you can, oh, small, right. although this is a highly, highly sought after. So uh, we're sending this off to all multiple partners as well as academics. 
So this is what it's all about. This is the final product. This is whole dried black soldier fly larvae. Wow, they're not very big, are they? So you, do you feed them whole like this? No, the so the gr reality is we dry them and extract a high quality protein flour. So this meal is what we're going into the animal feed pellets to make the high quality protein that they then need to grow. Oh. And so, I mean, can I eat this? Is it safe to eat? Yeah, of course, go for I'm it. I'm gonna give it a try. Oh, it's a little bit crunchy. Oh, it's kind of nutty. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, mean, you... I mean, this is not for humans. I mean, it could be down the line. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the, the here and now is to sustainably feed animals, but very much so you can see this baked into pastas or breads or other kind of pro uh, high carbohydrate products mm. where you can get your protein, you know, without harming the planet. Kieran is targeting the insects to provide 5 to 20% of fish or animal feed. He says it not only contains the key 12 amino acids that are needed for animals and humans to grow, but it's also hypoallergenic. Reality is the money investment is going there, the government support is going there, and the kind of the interest, just proof in having this conversation with you guys proves that this is going to be one of the key new industries. We won't necessarily need Facebook in 100 years. We will still need to eat, and we'll need to eat sustainably. So this is one of the few companies where I think you, know, you can build a legacy of sustainability and businesses that just do good by default. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.